Okay. All right. So let's start with the first one. I have um, a few positions. So in fact, I wanted to talk about what exactly we're going to do today. Um, but I think maybe it's better to explain after the first position. So we'll, um, I mean, I'm going to try to give a bunch of positions, depending on how fast we can go through them, of course. Yeah. Uh, we'll also still be doing our chat. So we'll be definitely doing chat. Uh, we will go over everything. Um, Madison's like, yes, you look great with the glasses, Madison. So let's <laughs> get back to our chest though. Uh, so what I want is, let's start by simply talking about the position. As always, I like to do that before we do anything else, right? So we have a position here, and the one thing I can tell you is Black's last move was H5. So it's White's turn to play, yeah? And um, let's kind of go over this and see first basic observation. Remember, I don't like to jump into moves, variations, anything. So all of you can simply, you can try to make any move on the board right now. The, right now the board is simply what you're seeing. At some point, I might ask a question and then you can make a move on the board. So right now there's nothing going on on the board. Uh, just you can see the board, that's it. And you can see the position and we'll just do that. So why don't all of you start typing in your basic observation? I don't want to hear a move. I don't want to hear a plan yet. What do you see? This is what helps us make these decisions eventually. So let's start with that. Again, it can be very simple, very basic. You don't have to be, you know, anything too complicated. Okay, James has given me something. Shawnak has given me something. Good to see you, Shawnak. Okay. Ryan has given me something. Ryo. Okay, so it looks like we are all giving some basic things. Nice, yeah, both rooks are an open file. I think this has been suggested, fair enough. Uh, we have a strong knight on e5 has been suggested. Again, very good. Symmetrical material, that's right, symmetrical pawn structure. Most of black pawns are on light squares, that is true. That's actually true. Okay, so I guess um, it's white to move, so white could try to get in is what um, is a possibility, but of course black can also try to get into D2 or D1, and white can try to get into these two squares. So, okay, fair enough. All right, now, um, the next few moves are sort of important, of course, that's the reason I'm, I'm giving this. This is actually one of my games. And um, basically, uh, I think it's maybe better to give you some part of the idea of what I'm going to work on. So I want to give you some positions where you have to make some important decisions. Yeah, it's not like, you know, casual planning and you just come continue to build or something. You have to make some important decisions. And when you do make them, you get a very nice position, maybe a decisive advantage, maybe a winning position, but um, it's very precise. So basically you have to be a little bit precise at this point going forward to get something. So. So this position kind of is obvious because if you don't do something right now, uh, the mo the game is going to end in, in a, end in a draw, yeah? It's kind of obvious. So how should we proceed? I'm also going to tell you, if I ask a question, don't jump into answering the question in like, you know, 10 seconds or something. If I give you more time, please take your time to think about it. But let's do some candidate moves. I'm still not asking a question yet. So just do the chat. Give me some candidate moves. How would you like to proceed as white? So now that we have talked about some of the basic things, we also know that if you don't do something um, very precise, you're going to, uh, the game is probably going to end in a draw. So you want to somehow make some, keep some pressure. Three candidate moves, Daniel, Ryo, yes, okay. Uh, Sanjana, I'm not sure about your last move. I mean, like, what is the purpose of that? I mean, okay, I'm not 100% sure, so. Okay, so it looks like most of you are coming with similar ones. Fair enough, fair enough. So we have some um, options. So we basically, um, the rook getting in, very much possible. 
uh, the bishop trade is possible. I guess F3 is a tempo to look at. Um, these are like some of the main moons that I'm seeing. Okay, Kelsey, is, uh, Kelsey you're continuing with some variation. That's, that's interesting, okay. Um, all right, so now let's say we will do two to three minutes to say which one are you actually going to calculate. Now, remember one thing, this is not a decision that I'm asking you to make in two to three minutes. Um, what I'm asking you to do is what, where are you going to spend some time, right? Uh, the reason I'm asking this is sometimes, I mean, last week, I don't know how many of you attended my class, I talked about how um, I crashed and burned in one of my games against um, Nizhnik, where I spent too much time in the wrong position. If you spend 15, 20 minutes in the wrong position, then you're really not going to recover from it. You're not going to be able to solve the position. Even though you can solve the problem, you're not going to be able to solve it. So that's right, Seanak. I showed them last week. I don't think you were there, but I showed them that game, which was a disaster, but probably a very big learning experience. And this is also actually from Cherry Blossom, by the way. So let's all kind of tell me which move you're going to start spending more time. So let's say this position, you will have about 10 minutes to make a decision. Right. I mean, this is a very normal position. It's not like, you know, there's a sharp tactical continuation that you have to calculate. So I don't think you should spend more than 10 minutes in a position like this. But let's say we have 10 minutes. Um, username is your own name, Andy. Just put in your name. Uh, the password is US Chess. Okay, Daniel has given me something. Okay. James has given me something. Okay. Sanjana, okay. Uh, and it's just a board. I'm going to be asking a question in that board uh, at different times. So just log in the board and look at that. When I ask a question, you, you you should be able to answer. But otherwise, you're just fine with the screen share as well and chat as well. Just I was trying to see if we can do it interactive where you can actually answer the questions through the board. Okay, so Wagner has told me something. Okay. So I've given, uh, I think I see a lot of you are giving me some first more options. Some of you have still not given me exactly what you're going to be calculating. Um, let's say now that you have reached some kind of an idea of what you're going to be thinking about and we've already spent some time in this position, I'm going to give about three minutes in the board. I'm going to ask a question now. Um, and let's say three minutes. You can make the move on the board um, and it'll kind of take you one more time after you play, of course, yeah. So let's see. Yep, now the question should have popped up, but don't rush, you still have three minutes though. And then of course we'll think about how exactly I came to this decision or you know the details of it. So far I see Daniel and Eric, you both got it right, very nice. How much time do I have? Got a minute and a half left. Oops, I think this kind of popped in here, sorry. That's okay if you get it wrong. I mean, it's, yeah, it's not entirely that, you know, you have to get the exact move. Uh, it's more about really understanding the process. Yeah, you get in a great position, making sure you make the right decision. It's okay if you make a mistake, just let's try to learn from that, okay? All right, let's see. We'll talk about, if you have any questions of, let's say you played a certain variation and it didn't work out, let's talk about it. You know, we'll get that. We'll see what it is. Ryo, I saw that. So I'm going to kind of ask you on that too. I want to know why. Alexander, was that your first move? Maybe you can tell me what you're thinking about and why you want to do that and we can just discuss that. All right, guys, so timer is up. I see how many people have got this. So I see four of you, Eric, Daniel, Sanjana, and Kelsey. Got it, right? Okay, so, but the thing is, I noticed some of you came very close. I'm not going to be too worried about anyone who played bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, and knight d3. That I think is not so bad. But I do want to hear different other, other different decisions. For example, I did anyone pick F3? I see that some of you played pawn to F3 in move one. So did anyone do that? 
do you want to talk about it if you played f3 ryo you played f3 right do you want to discuss why you played f3 or okay let's go ryo yes ryo go on and i played f3 like my my idea i felt like the position required like the bishop to be chased away okay and okay. like my, my idea was like if you play a like bishop d5 okay and attack my pawn I, I I can I can either just I can either play b3 or I I, I probably better is rook, rook c7. Okay, rook c7. So basically, you give up a2 and take f7. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna trade that those two pawns, and I don't feel like he's gonna create anything. Queen side, and now he has e6 pawn weakness, and the other side, other pawns are really that great. And like, okay. if the bishop moves say to the other diagonal, I. I don't know, like he, if he moves to like B7, like play Rook C7, and like if he moves to like some other square, F F5, even that gives the E4, but I don't need it. I just play Rook C7, and I feel like the Rook is pretty strong there. Okay, so the main question though is, I mean, fair enough, reasonable explanation. So you want to get Rook C7 and you wanted to play F3. The only main question is, I was playing here, so I can relate to that. Um, I, I was thinking, do I want to trade the bishops or not trade the bishops? That was uh, how I was thinking this, right? Um, I can always play f3 after that, right? Like, so my question is, I can always play f3, I can always play rook c7. My question was, do I want to trade the bishops or not? I, right? I, I, I felt like the trade, I, I felt like the bishop was kind of awkward, so. Okay, okay. Like All right, fair enough. Thank you. So my general take here is that I think after f3, you are not really you know, using the pot full potential of this, um, you know, this bishop on g2 after f3. So if I'm going to play f3 to keep the bishop on the board, or if I'm going to play bishop h3 or bishop f1 to keep the bishop on the board, I was not a big fan of actually keeping the bishop at that point. So this decision came to me quite quickly. I felt like I need to take it, right? And the next point after bishop takes um, and knight takes is again, quite straightforward, yeah? I have my possibility to go rook c6 and rook c7, but I don't want this to become like a, you know, kill each other kind of a, thing here where I go rook c7, they go rook d2. So some of you played rook c7, some of you played rook c6, right? Again, I don't think it's a completely bad move, but you just are giving too much counterplay for your opponent, which I don't see why, right? Uh, so for example, you, let's play rook c6. Okay, so you want to take this pawn. In fact, rook c6 looks a little bit awkward. So let's say, I don't know if I should start with the check or if I should go rook d2, maybe I'll just go rook d2. And the next move I want to actually play f6. I want to try to take one of these two pawns. And it doesn't look so promising. I mean, like, okay, you're going to either pick up this one or this, or this one, or you're going to pick up both the pawns. But what about these pawns? Not convinced, right? I'm not so convinced about exactly what is going on here. The same thing with rook c7 too. After rook d2, it seems to me more like we are killing each other's pawns. And I'm not able to clearly tell um, how much of an advantage I have. I mean, this would have been a nice threat if I can do, but I'm not able to do that with this knight here. So... I did consider some ideas like takes and then eventually play f3 and then try to go knight g5. But I mean, quickly, none of these things mattered because I can stop him, right? So more precisely, f3, knight f6. I think, Daniel, you had given me this idea. It's also pretty nice. I can play king f2. Uh, rook d2 can be met with knight d3 now so because e2 is very well defended. And now how is he going to stop me from rook c6 or rook c7? This looks much, much stronger, right? A very simple decision. But if you made this decision in a game, you get a decisive advantage. Like right? you get to a point where you can completely add pressure for your opponent. Yeah. So I, I think after this, it's just a little bit more difficult. My opponent actually played knight to d6. Um, so I think there are at least a couple of good moves. Um, Austin, I think you need the link for this. We're just doing um, a game. We're starting with a game that I played. It's um, it's basically trying to find positions where we have to make very important, decisive kind of calculations. So that's what we are working on. So, okay, so in this position, what should white play? Let's try, I think there are probably at least a couple of moves, but uh, I, I, liked, I liked my move. So let's do, my password is US chess. All right, guys, let's go on chat. What are the candidate moves in this position. I think there are two moves that kind of stand out. 
actually there could be more moves now i think about it at least maybe a couple of moves what i had in mind daniel has given me three moves okay very reasonable okay shonak has given me three andy okay so i mean i'm i'm just going to go through this fast because i have other important positions i mean this is you know important points to discuss yes you can play rook c7 you can play rook c6 and um and i think all these variations are probably going to have some kind of an advantage uh but i think there is something that's more precise i saw knight c6 to be one of the most aggressive moves here uh there is definitely rook d1 but i was not happy about knight b7 so Rook D1 was definitely one of my candidate moves. There was also simply King F2 as my candidate move because I felt like why not simply improve? If he plays Rook C8, I can play Rook D1. So again, bunch of candidate moves, but I ended up playing Knight to C6, which I felt was the most forcing continuation, and I felt you know I want to go with that. Um, Austin, when I ask questions, you can answer, and points will come from that, and then you can you can do based on that. Yeah. Uh, so the reason I like knight c6 is, of course, because rook c8 is not possible because of knight e7, and rook d7 also not possible because I simply can pin the rook, and then it's just basically lost. Yeah. So that's the reason why knight c6 immediately stood out for me, because I'm basically kicking this rook out of both the open files. You have two open files on the board, and now I'm able to actually handle both, right? So knight to c6 was played, and my opponent played rook to a8. Um I think I'll ask this as a question the next one is kind of easy I think so what should white play here I'll just give you um 60 seconds I mean whatever the most active moves I think black's position is terrible after rook 8 you just need to continue adding the pressure yeah very straightforward let's see again there are lots of good moves but you need to probably find the one that really kills your opponent remember that when you have an advantage in a position like this you really need to keep building it don't let them escape yeah your move is not bad right so i mean i would not say it's it's a bad move but again the thing is you need to play what is absolutely more um you know if you have a crushing move you have to go for it right because you played e4 yeah so e4 is a good move but it's not the best so rook 2 D1 was what I played in the game. I think it makes a lot of logical sense because the rook is getting in, yeah. I mean, why would we not do it? And the knight has no good squares. In fact, those who played E4 think about it, you're trying to probably restrict the knight and improve your position, but you don't need to do that yet because if I go knight of 5, then E4 is very strong. And the knight has no good squares to go to. Knight C4, then I go B3 and the knight again has no good squares but to go to maybe A3. Right? Um so Yeah, e4 is again very reasonable move. I wouldn't say it's a bad move at all, but again, the lesson I want to show you today mainly is that if you have a winning position, you have to go very te- I mean technically you have to convert it, right? That means you have to keep maximizing your your advantage. So here I think black is in serious trouble. There is no really good move. So my opponent actually played knight to e8 and I played rook to d7. So I'm going to move through the next few moves a little fast and then go to the next most critical point. So at this point I was super happy of course, yeah. I mean I think anyone who reaches this you are going to be very happy. Three moves ago we were like both both rooks have an open file. Um you know black was putting up a reasonable fight with some counter attack. We were even trying to play knight to d3. So I had to bring my knight to more of a defensive position um or at least temporarily I could have gone to c5 from there. Uh, but now I'm not even in a defensive position. Look at this. It's beautifully placed on c6. It actually stopping this just is never possible. Uh so I was like super happy. I mean like white and uh, black pieces are super tied up. So here he played king f8 and then um again I played knight to e5 hitting the pawn pretty forced to play this knight to g6 check and king to g8. So here I started thinking a little bit because again I have a great position but I need to convert yeah. He's defending everything. This is defended he can play e5 if this is under attack and uh I mean all bad pieces but still defended. <laughs> so i need to make my next breakthrough right so let's say what should what, what how do you think what should proceed here I, again i think there are two or three candidate moves that immediately came to my mind so let's see 
Type in some candidate moves in chat. Everyone, let's go. But Austin, I want you to chat, private chat, come on. This is a variation, so I want all of you to do private chat. Very nice. So basically, this is what I'm getting. I'm getting knight f4. I'm getting pawn f4. I'm getting king f2. I'm getting rook e7. I guess these are all the active moves. I also got e4, I guess. I got h4 fixing this pawn. So we have a bunch of interesting moves to consider here, yeah? Okay, not bad. So what I was doing in the game, of course, is I was calculating knight f4 very quickly, and then I had to reject it quickly because of what um, Austin just initially suggested, because if knight f4, black will simply play e5, and I, I cannot take the pawn because of g6, so I have to go to e6. And uh, it's not entirely bad, but I didn't feel the necessity of simply relocating my knight from g6 to e6 at this point, yeah? Because this knight is actually uh, guarding g7. Um, I think Evan needs a link, okay. Let's just send him the link very quickly. So the next question, of course, was since um, white is in such a dominating position, I asked myself, what is black going to do, right? I mean, the rook cannot go to c8 because of knight e7 check. The knight has nowhere to go. King cannot go to h7 because knight f8 check picks up the pawn, right? So I really thought only two moves are possible for black, right? At least to make progress. I mean, I can play a5 kind of moves, but okay, I'm really not doing much with that. Um, e5 and f5 were the moves that I thought black might play. So then clearly e4 and f4 are very much part of my candidate moves. It turns out I think the strongest move in the position is king f2. Um, technically, I played f4, controlling e5. I think most of you gave me this logic, which I really like, is that, you know, stop e5, yeah? So I like this because this pawn is something I can actually attack. So I can kind of fix that as a weakness. So my opponent actually played e5. I kind of had a sense he might do that um, because he's in such a bad position. I think it's not easy for him to do much. So it was reasonable for me to think that he can play this. Now, yeah, interesting point for me now, yeah? I can take and win the pawn. I can play f5 and close the position. I can ignore and simply play king f2, right? Again, there's no right or wrong exactly here, so I'm not going to ask a question, but um, let's see what you pick. What would you play in this position? Chat, just chat. When we have a very clear yes or no kind of an answer situation, I will probably ask the question in the board. Harish, just take it. Honestly, all three look good. That's actually a good point. Daniel, this is exactly the problem with the winning position, yeah? So right now, I think you've gotten to a very clear winning position. You just have to pick from one of the best moves and it's always tricky. Take the free pawn, okay. Some of the saying F5. Knight, Evan doesn't want the knight to be on f6. I like that. King f2, keep the tension and make him think. I like that, Shonak. If you don't take it, then what's the point of f4? Well, Austin, it's not necessarily just to win the pawn. You can also go f5. By the way, f5 is a strong bind too, right? Um, so, I mean, king h7 was one of the other ways for the black king to escape. And f5 will really create some checkmating nets, right? Trickier because it gives black a little bit of counterplay with knight f6. Sanjana, that's right. Okay, so moving on, uh, I actually played king f2. And I have to say, I didn't calculate everything precisely. Um, I spent a lot of time on this and I was really tempted to take the pawn because I was like, okay, if he's giving me a pawn. If I don't take it now and I don't get the opportunity later on, would it be like a bad decision, right? Uh, and then after, of course, knight f6, my main move I was considering was rook e7 because if king f8, I have this check and I had to stop rook e8 because then he would really try to win the pawn right back. And I felt I should be good, but okay, black probably will get some rook c8 and get the rook in and then I have to probably get knight d3 and then king f2. Um, I was thinking there's some knight g4 ideas to take this pawn, but then I can go after this pawn. Overall, my assessment was that white should be better. White should definitely be, uh, I mean, better in the sense, not just simply better, white should win, I think. So, I don't know if I'm that far off. Probably it's still a um, reasonable assumption um, for, for me to make. But I felt 
that in a position like this, what would your opponent want to do? In fact, I was very happy about this because in my after the game, I was talking to my opponent and he said exactly the same thing, right? He would have been extremely happy if I took the pawn. So he was really, really looking forward to get his pieces to move around a little bit more. So he was saying that um, he was really hoping that I would take the pawn and then he can at least play some active chess. That is one of the main reasons I actually declined. And F5 is also possible, by the way. Um, the reason I rejected F5 was I was in, I was kind of worried. I mean, I would say worried. I thought he can play this and try to play some rook a6 and then bring the knight in. And after rook d8, I always have this. And the move, I could play some rook e7 and then he has to go back. I mean, again, lots of calculation, but nothing super obvious. I think F5 is still very strong for white. Again, no questions. But this is what I was seeing. It's Andy, you want to go after this pawn, yeah? <laughs> but the thing is, that's like the most useless pawn, though. You know, you take that pawn, you really don't threaten anything. Uh, I really wanted to play e4 and get the king to e3. And then somehow maintain some kind of a zugzwang. I was hoping that that's what I could do. Really, really not give any chance for black to move. But anyways, let's move on with the game because uh, we reach another interesting point and where I want all of you to make important decisions. So, okay, I played king f2. Pawn captures, pawn captures, and he played f5. I have to say this move was a little bit of a surprise. I kind of missed it because I thought this move was not possible and I would actually pick up the pawn. Um, I just didn't realize that he was getting knight f6 and knight e4 or knight f6 and knight g4 followed by some rook f8 ideas. So when he played f5, I kind of felt bad. And I also missed, actually, um, not knight h4. I, I completely missed that he can play king f7, king e6, yeah? Knight e7 check and knight takes f5 picks up the pawn, but he plays king f7 and king e6, which I had not seen. Um, and overall, this knight f6, knight e4 is the one that's creating the problem against knight h4. So here, I think I was a little, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say too unhappy, but a little unhappy. I was kind of worried that I'm going to let my advantage slip away and I cannot trade. So, okay, I played a prophylactic move first. I played king f3. I didn't want knight f6 to be a problem. So he played knight f6. Now I played rook to b7. I had seen some of this calculation early on, but okay, he played knight to d5. So here, I think it's going to be our next moment. We have to continue very, very precisely here. White has a great position, but like I said, there is some danger that you might let it slip. A couple of bad moves, a couple of trades. Guess what? You'd be playing an in game where you might be up a pawn, but it's very drawish, right? That's one of the fears that white should have here. So there are two main candidate moves I calculated here. Let's again use the chat. What are the two main moves you would be calculating here? The second move, Andy, I'm not a big fan of. First move, yes. The second move is definitely not part of my candidate. Daniel, correct. I think those two are the moves I was absolutely thinking about. Alexander, the second move, yes, the first move, not so much. Okay, so Shanak, the second move. Uh, your third move is possible, but uh, I'll tell you a little bit more to see how we can avoid it. Havish, the same thing. I think a lot of you are playing knight e7. I'm just going to just tell you, I'm not a big fan of this move because I don't think this knight and this knight are equal. And I think white would, of course, still be better in the rook and pawn end game. Uh, but with the knights off, black might be probably feeling a little bit, little bit more relieved, if, if anything. So I just didn't want to look at knight e7 as much. Andy, yep, I like this move. So I think most of you have come with the first move as very forcing and very important. So what I'll do is I'm gonna ask a question right now. Again, I'll give you like three minutes. Um, you want to really pose a problem for black, right? Black at this point has weaknesses all over the place. You can probably attack a lot of things. Um, but the thing is, if black defends everything, then okay, again, I, I don't think white got anything, right? So let me ask a question right now. And let's say three minutes. And okay, so how exactly should white proceed? So let's just, I'm just gonna ask, 
um two two moves at a time i'm not going to ask too too much past that okay so think about it don't rush into your move yet think about it and then you can play even i played against um uh thomas barton so a strong player from philadelphia i think philadelphia pennsylvania i think philadelphia yeah and i played against him several times and he's actually known for coming back the last time we played actually i was completely winning and he came back to make a draw shana is like i remember this game <laughs> bartel okay ryan has it i like it um well i didn't give the two options have uh, a but okay i guess one of them pretty much every one of you kind of got it i feel like i don't need to tell you that so continue on whatever your instincts are and then after you, you, we make the moves i'll i'll talk about them right did i show this oh i already showed this particular game to you i have one more position after this so maybe um did you start from the initial position right how did you get the initial one wrong then i showed it from this position aha uh -huh. okay so that's where we are so watch out trying might be ready eric you kind of played the other one other move the two candidate moves that i was seriously thinking and calculating you played that other move Daniel is on fire, yeah. Again, like I said, this is just a little fun thing so to make it interactive. So you can actually make a move and make a decision. Sometimes I don't get a chat from you guys. So All right, how much time do we have? We have another 11 seconds. We're pretty much done. Okay so timer is up by the way the two moves that i was talking about is one was e4 the other one was knight h4 these are the two moves i was really considering um i actually spent quite a bit of time on e4 um i should say because initially i was not so clear on what knight h4 does but then of course once i started calculating knight h4 in depth i just started realizing what i have right um So Sanjana yes the problem with rook d7 first of all is you're repeating moves yeah so in fact if you think about it this was a position right this was a position you go rook b i went rook b7 and then knight d5 was played so essentially we are repeating moves with um rook to d7 so Shonak you also did the same thing right and even I guess um I don't know if you did the same thing so obviously knight h4 is the most forcing move so when i asked you about candidate moves i think most of you picked knight h4 which makes a lot of sense it really forces black to play rook f8 right so the other move like i said is e4 which really advances the king and after knight f6 check or something and then i can go further in there might be checkmate threats and my king is basically super piece there so ah so sanjana you wanted to move your rook to c7 yeah problem is i'll go right d5 again attacking the rook right Okay anyway so let's look at knight h4 after rook f8 now again yeah rook a7 is the first candidate move to consider but the problem with after rook a7 rook f6 and everything is defended so it doesn't look like we have anything clear yeah actually i'm trying to remember why i did not play rook to c7 sanjana let me go back here very quickly so sanjana is thinking why not rook to c7 because after knight to d5 she wants to play this but maybe i have king f7 and king here can i try that um not so sure king f7 knight h4 you're right and you're actually winning that pawn oh by the way i simply ah rook d8 you're threatening rook d5 that's the reason okay 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 that makes more sense so let's see i'm not able to remember exactly what put me off in this particular variation and after king h7 i guess you'll still play knight h4 and pick up this pawn Yeah, it looks kind of so. King f7, knight h4. Maybe this is one of the variations I did consider, but I think knight f5 here. Yeah. 
yeah it looks like definitely white is good here too and i wish i can exactly tell you what the problem was for some reason i was not or maybe i saw this other variation and i thought i thought this is better and i went for it not 100% sure yeah but looks like your move is fair enough reasonable yeah okay knight h4 rook f8 and yeah rook d7 makes a lot more sense because i want to attack the pawn from the rank yeah i don't want to go through the file so after rook d7 basically every move is kind of losing in fact if knight b4 i play a3 if knight c2 i play rook d2 and the knight actually has to go to a1 that's kind of sad <laughs> and i can go rook d6 here so and knight f6 simply runs into rook a7 and i'm losing a pawn so knight b6 was played in the game um so here again there are a couple of interesting moves let's say there are two candidate moves what are the two candidate moves i'm going to actually ask this as a question and make it simple let's say just 5 points and only 60 seconds because there are two obvious candidate moves you can all type it in chat if you want to and one of them has to be the move maybe the last question i've been i'll ask for 100 points so anyone who gets it right can take take home <laughs> or take anyone else and go to the top of the leaderboard rook b7 i don't think james rook one of them is yeah Andy again can you do private chat please yeah thanks okay so i'm asking a question for 60 seconds which one would you pick there's basically rook a7 and rook d6 ryan you got to draw <laughs> how did you miss it james you can make him who i asked a question in the uh, or the board yeah rook behind pawns I'll tell you why I picked the move I did Tori got it Okay who can tell me the timer okay in, in 10 seconds royal you got it good daniel is like honestly the other one looks fine too <laughs> okay austin maybe you can help explain okay austin go tell tell us why uh so i thought that if you play uh rook d6 and black might be to play knight c4 and then if rook a6 then knight b2 and black has to trade the pawn instead of just losing the pawn actually you know what that might be same either ways because think about this if you go rook a7 i can still play knight c4 and if you actually but play this, i have check now you have two options if you go king e3 i can play check and i can pick up on h2 if you don't play king e3 i get rook f6 yeah so basically this is going to transpose either ways whether i play rook a7 or rook d6 i think knight c4 transposes yeah um, so that's that's one possibility but in fact i had no clue either when i played the game i, I played rook a7 rook d6 turns out is complicated but it's actually still possibly winning um rook d6 then there is rook f6 correct yeah this is a little tricky again my opponent is possibly hoping for this rook captures pawn captures and after knight here so basically there is knight a4 after b3 knight c3 hitting the pawn continuously and after this knight b1 and after a4 you play check and you pick it up but it turns out i'm still winning because check king here after takes 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 and then white has knight d4 so and you would be winning in this knight and game 3 versus 2 but this is absolutely not what i wanted to play yeah from the position i had i was not going to play this end game anyways <laughs> so i wanted something more concrete so anyways i went rook a7 he played knight c4 and after rook captures a6 he played knight captures b2 and again i have two options i'm not going to ask this as a question um i picked rook to b6 um, i mean i rook to b6 i was worried about rook to a8 and rook takes a2 so i ended up playing rook to a5 so once i played rook to a5 i think now the rest of the game is quite straightforward here takes so i'll just ask one last question in the last 
move of the game um just to wrap this game up or looks like we might have only one time in fact in that case i'll actually prefer to show the other one give me one second guys i wanted to show one more position so let's see if i can really pull it up okay yeah so i will show the last a position by but i'll just uh, okay i went on to win this game the towards the end there was some small tactical point yeah okay let's do the next position so we don't have too much time but All right so this was again one of my games in the from cherry blossom again decisive points where i have to make some decisions so this one is a little bit more calculation as well yes yeah? it's not just Shonak, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> so Shonak saw the, saw my games. I don't know how much he remembers, but so my opponent's last move was Bishop to F4, by the way, um, and I think Black can make very uh, very precise decisions to get a very strong advantage. Uh, so there are probably two questions within this. So let's ask. Let me ask the first question again. I'm going to give you three minutes. It shouldn't take too long. Um, what's the main sequence so you have to think about it because you, i don't want you to fall for any tricks okay so that's the that's the main thing um okay 3 minutes fair enough i'm not doing 50 points guys <laughs> maybe i'll give one position where you have to find the most ridiculous move and that will be worth 200 points and then <laughs> whoever finds it will win the will be the champion of the leaderboard so obviously there is a simple tactical idea and my opponent has some and 11.66 what happened to the full score Yeah, my opponent clearly saw the tactical idea, of course. So, do before you make your move, think a little bit. Yeah, I know most of you are thinking some tactical ideas, and it's very straightforward. Yes, it is, but it's not like you know, White simply blundered that and didn't see it. White has a plan too. When you get position where you get precise advantages, you can precisely go for a win. You definitely have to. So I mean the decimal score is basically each move counts for something. So basically, looks since I how many moves are you playing? Yeah. So every move you get three point three three. All right. How much time do we have? Tori has it. Nice. Santosh has it. Shona has it. Okay, so you remember that part. Okay. All right. Last minute. we going to have a 200 pointer Austin we're going to discuss that yeah actually you have a, you asked a good question i want you to calculate a little bit and then let's see Daniel we'll talk about that too yeah all right so timer is pretty much up okay so clearly my opponent missed 
queen d2. So, I mean, that the minute I spotted queen d2, I, to me, it felt like, okay. So, of course, first bishop f4 looked a little shocking because I have knight d4. Why is he playing this? Then clearly I see, okay, his plan is to play knight takes e6. Yeah. So, and the problem with this is that after knight takes d4, knight takes d4, rook here, knight here, either move. Actually, it's not so clear. Let's talk about it. Let's say you play rook f6. So, what will white's move be here? It's kind of obvious, yeah? So, of course, I'll play c5. Now, suddenly things are not so easy, right? At least not like it was, right? You can try some queen d2 moves now, but of course now you're giving me a discovered check first. I don't know, maybe knight d4 check followed by queen e3. I don't know exactly, but um, you have given me an extra move, right? And the same thing after rook f2, yes. And the, the thing is you need to worry about this move. I think um, I can even take and do it. I don't know if I should play c5 take. For example, let's say take, you play check. I go king g3, you take my rook, and I go c5. And I think the position is extremely unclear because if I get knight g5, it looks very dangerous with knight f7 check. I know my rook is kind of bottled for now, but if I get king h2, my rook will definitely join in. So, okay, maybe black with precise play even here might win. Sanjana, what is that variation? Let's, talk about, let's look at it. So after rook f6, c5, what did we see? Now queen d2. Okay, maybe I don't even know what exactly my move should be because if I go knight g5, I'm worried you might get bishop d5 in. Um, after knight d4, you want to play... Hold on, let me just check Sanjana's variation. What is the variation again? After knight d4, rook f7, okay. Should we find knight takes e4? Oh, that's very interesting. I think, oh, knight takes e4 doesn't work. Austin, queen takes c1 check, yeah. Okay, anyways, I think it's possible. Yeah, Sanjana, I think it's very much possible. But why allow all of this, yeah? Queen d2 is very strong. Again, very precise moment. Your opponent gives you an opportunity. You need to finish off the game, right? Queen d2, and I think game is over. So here, I was expecting queen e3 as a main move. And after rook takes f2, I'm just going to be up a pawn. So this seems to me like clearly better for black. Uh, instead, he played um, rook c2. Okay, so now this is a, a clear mistake and now black is winning even more, more so. So you want a big question, but I cannot, I have to be fair. If I'm going to give 100 points for this one, it's not going to work, guys. <laughs> so I'm going to give another three minutes and let's see who's tactically going to solve this problem and win the game. Okay, um, as it is, your queen has a bunch of options, probably two main checks that you can play. And I'll make it 20 points, okay? Once I did do that though, so I you have to put in the clock timer in seconds. So instead of putting 100 uh, for three minutes, 180 seconds, I put 180 as points. So that did happen once. Okay, so let's find the win. So Sanjana, I think you went too fast. The problem with that move is actually doesn't have a very strong threat. That's the only issue. <laughs> the move you played, Sanjana, yeah? Well, think about it. What are you actually threatening after that? Because I always have F3 when you play E3. So even then, yeah? Even then, I will play F3. Ooh, looks like... Most of you. Raya is the only one who got it right so far. Oops. Wait, what did I do to the alignment of the board? I messed it, my bad. Okay, let's see. Santosh got it. And Daniel is wisely taking his time.
Yeah, good job, Santosh. So in, in a couple of decisions, I what I would feel like, you know, a game which is, I, I felt actually comfortable for Black, but still very interesting position, suddenly turned into an immediate win, right? When these kind of opportunities show up in your game, you have to make that precise, precise decision. You don't want to play something that's slightly better, it's still okay, right? No, you have to be ruthless, right? That's where you convert the games. That's where you convert a slightly better position to an actual complete win. Let's see, Austin, how does that work? Um, actually, you're still not threatening anything in that position, yeah? After e3? I'll play rook takes f2 first. Sure, yeah, let's look at rook, rook takes rook g4. Is the time up? It looks like we have six more seconds. I think Daniel went for the same thing, yeah? I think you played the same one that Sanjana played, Daniel. So let's take a look at it. But you still edged out everyone to lead the <laughs> leaderboard. All right, so I had seen this very quickly because I, I mean, this knight is trapped, right? So queen d1, king h2. First, let me point out that this is just winning a piece. Again, it's simple chess. I don't have to worry about anything because c5 is always met with bishop d5. And after knight g5, h6, you just won a piece. I didn't need to calculate anything after this, right? Um, the only thing I needed to check is, is anything very complicated, right? Is white actually going to attack my king? Is there anything complicating that's, I mean, is there any discovered attacks or anything, right? Uh, you thought this was too simple. Well, I mean, my opponent also probably didn't realize that the knight on e6 could actually get trapped, right? But okay, let's look at rook g4. It's probably a good move, but the problem is I don't see it as, an, as, a, as a major threat. Okay, so what are you threatening? Because rook g2, king g2, after e3, you, I play f3. That's still not a big threat. And well, then e2 is a threat. I mean, that seems too much though, right? Don't you think? Um, but in that case, maybe I will play... Um, what if I play knight g5 then? Yeah, knight g5 is a good place to start. Let's do knight g5. You cannot play rook g2 anymore because I can take and maybe even play knight f3 or actually e3, I will play f3. Actually, yeah, f3. Ah, after c5, you have queen c4. I'm actually, I missed it. I was thinking after e2, I can play rook takes e2 and queen takes e2. I have c5 check, but you have queen c4, so that doesn't work. So let's try it. So you're playing e3. By the way, did I have any other move, like simply moving my rook for a queen trade? Uh, I think I'm getting the chat as probably winning with rook gc4. I'm not sure in which position we are rook gc4. Oh, maybe after e3, yeah? the rook coming in. Okay, okay, yeah. In the F3 line, yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, that's very much possible. But let's see, I don't know if I can play anything else here. Okay, let's think a little bit. If I move my rook, I'm offering a trade. So that's the first thought process I can think of. This should have been 25 points. <laughs> ah, you're training queen d6 check? But queen d6, I... Oh, I go back, then you you just pick up my piece. My bad, my bad. I cannot move my rook, yeah? So, fair enough, yeah. Rook g4 is probably also pretty strong. I mean, I don't see this to be a problem. e3. And after the check, you have bishop d5. And after f3, you have e2. And I don't see how exactly I can stop this, yeah? Or also... Also, rook gc4 is where we are considering, right? Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Two possible moves here. So in that case, maybe rook g4 is also going to work, guys. I need to check the analysis. I don't see any, at least I don't see any refutation from white, from what I'm seeing. But I, I just didn't calculate it because I just saw a simple win, yeah? I mean, I'm just winning a piece. I just went for it. I didn't really think about anything other, anything other, any other move. All right, so I guess this is a good place to wrap it up. Again, my whole point, of the lesson was to say, if you get a critical point, make sure 
you find a precise precise uh, i mean you have to be more accurate to 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 get that advantage you want a ridiculous mu question i don't think i can do that <laughs> i i don't have a ridiculous mu to find how can i find give you a ridiculous mu question i already gave you my game with nishnik otherwise i would have given you that ask you to find that move like night night g to study is that right Oh, you had a miscalculation there. Yeah, I'm for now I'm going to let Daniel be the winner, well deserved winner, guys. <laughs> oh, of course, now we are talking about Kahoot. No, no, we can't <laughs> do Kahoot. All right, guys, I think this is a good place to wrap it up.